is it possible to get your home clean and tidy with index cards? We're gonna to talk today about the index card cleaning routine. My name is Betsy. I have a wonderful husband and two small kids and a third one on the way. And today we are talking all about the index card cleaning routine, which is also known as sidetracked home executives or the she system. And I am going to talk first about the origin of this cleaning routine. Then I'm going to talk about who it might be for. And then finally, we're going to talk about just a basic breakdown of what this cleaning routine entails. So first off, Origin. This book was originally written and came out in the late 1970s, so it's from the Wayback Machine. It was done by two sisters, and the unique thing about this book is these two sisters were not organized ladies, self-professed slobs. They were messy, life was chaotic, their homes were chaotic, and so it is incredibly relatable as you're reading through it, and they are hilarious. I found myself laughing out loud several times. So who is this cleaning routine for? Who would it fit well? I would say, number one, people who love analog. If you are somebody who loves a paper copy of things, this cleaning routine would definitely be for you. If you are, number two, detail oriented. If you are a person who really likes to get down into the nitty gritty or really feel like you need a lot of details to keep control on things and to keep a handle on home management, then this routine is definitely detail oriented and would be something I think that you would really enjoy. Thirdly, people who want customization. If you are someone who has constantly been frustrated by other cleaning routines where you feel like it's very rigid and inflexible, this cleaning routine is also great for that because it's incredibly customizable. They give you kind of the shape and structure and then you build it up yourself in a way that best fits your life. Now let's talk basic breakdown. Like I said, there is nothing digital about this routine. Everything is analog and so here are the supplies that you will need to get started. You will need an index card file box for three by five cards. You will need 25 each of yellow, blue, and pink 3x5 cards. You will need 100 white 3x5 cards, and you will need blank dividers to fit into that 3x5 index card file box. So what you're going to start with is just grabbing a year at a glance calendar, just a really small one, and tape that to the inside of your card file box for reference. Secondly, you're going to make a basic week plan, setting up specific days for specific things. So you have an errands day or you have a family day or you have a cleaning day. You kind of decide based on your lifestyle, based on your family schedule, what you're going to do on specific days. When does it make sense for you to grocery shop? When does it make sense for you to clean? And this is one thing that they suggest and I really appreciate it. They have two cleaning days. One is kind of a light to medium cleaning day and another one is more of a heavier cleaning day. And again, this is all totally suggested you can break it up however you want but they say sometimes for them it was easier to have a lighter to medium cleaning day where they were doing about two hours of cleaning and then a heavier cleaning day when they were doing upwards of three to four hours of cleaning now that may sound like a lot but where a lot of other cleaning routines that are kind of in vogue right now tell you oh let's do 20 minutes of cleaning a day or 30 minutes of cleaning a day and you don't really have heavier cleaning days sometimes that doesn't really work well for people who want to do a larger session of cleaning so if you are somebody who really doesn't like to do 15 or 20 minutes a day and you'd rather just knock out four hours on a Saturday or whatever, then this is a routine that you will really love. That is what worked best for them and that's what they suggest if that works for you. So you've got your calendar at a glance, you've got your basic week plan that is taped into the top of your card file box, then you're going to make a menu plan. They suggest doing a menu plan where you do the same type of meal every week. So on Mondays you'll always do chicken, you know, Tuesdays you'll always do tacos. That just takes out a lot of decision fatigue and they found that when they were meal planning, if they had a certain type of meal, always scheduled on a particular day, then it cut down on all of that overwhelm of what am I going to make and what's going to be for dinner. All right, so now let's actually get into the task cards. And this is where you'll actually see the index card cleaning routine really take shape. So you've got your color coded cards and you're going to put one job or one task per card. You've got four different colors of cards and here is what they're for. Yellow is for your daily or every other day tasks. Blue is for your weekly or every other week tasks. White is for your monthly or seasonal tasks. Pink is for personal things or errands. 
And with the pink cards, when they talk about personal things, like if you have a hobby that you're working on or you wanna make sure that you're scheduling in to go get a manicure or a pedicure, things like that that don't really necessarily relate to cleaning your house, but they relate more to self-care. And then on pink cards, you're also gonna write regular errands that you run. All right, so card info. What the heck do you put on these cards? They have a really specific way that they lay them out, and here's what it looks like. First off, you're gonna put the task name on the card. Underneath, you can write child, if this is a task that one of your children can do. Up in the right-hand corner, you're gonna put the time limit for the task. And they recommend the first time or two that you do it, actually timing yourself to make sure that you have an accurate perception of how long the job takes. In the left-hand corner, you're gonna put frequency. How often does this need to be done? Every day, every other day, every week. If it is a mini job, and they classify these as jobs that take less than 10 minutes, you can put that in the top center of the card. Underneath the task name, you're going to put any notes. Notes that you need to remind yourself of certain things, or if you're handing that task card to a family member to complete, then on the bottom left-hand side, you're gonna put the last date that this job was done. And then on the bottom right hand side, you're going to put how many times you have skipped. I loved this. So the sisters are so real and so relatable. And they, of course, confess there are certain jobs that they would skip because they just didn't want to do them. And I can totally relate to that. So they allowed themselves to skip a job twice, but no more than twice. So if they skipped it, they had to write on the card when they skipped it. And then they knew if they had two skips that they really needed to make that job a priority on the next go round. All right, let's talk about dividers. So they have you set up dividers one through 31 for the days of the month. You front file your cards. So that means if it's the seventh of the month, you put all of the cards that you need to get done on the seventh in front of that number seven divider. So at the beginning of the month, place your cards according to when they get done through the month. Daily task cards get moved back each day as they get done. Then you've got your January through December dividers. Store all the cards for the month you're not currently in with these dividers. And then on the 25th of every month, always file a check dates to remember card to remind you to file all the cards for the coming month in their appropriate slots so that you're set to go for the next month and you're not feeling like you're scrambling to catch up on the first. All right, let's talk about additional cards and dividers. The sisters recommend having birthday and anniversary card, one for each month of the year. And on that card is kind of a master list of all the special occasions that you need to remember for that month. You file one for each month and you put that card at the front of the current month. So you're remembering which special occasion is coming and when. They also recommend A to Z dividers for names and addresses. They really treat their card file box also as an address book. They also recommend doing calendar reminder cards. So if you have upcoming appointments that are in the distance that you need to remember, you write a card for that and then you file it in that appropriate upcoming month so that you remember that it's coming. Now these additional cards, birthday and anniversary card, the A to Z dividers and the calendar reminder cards, this is something that I would not necessarily incorporate for me and my card file box. I prefer honestly to keep those things digital our names and addresses that's something my husband and i it's just easier for us to share and keep that updated if it's digital and then for me i really have my own kind of calendar system it is analog but i have my own calendar system where i'm tracking appointments and dates and i don't really necessarily need to have a separate card in my file box for anniversaries and birthdays or to remember doctor's appointments or dentist appointments or things like that. All right, so in the book, they also go into more on de-junking your house. But just for this video, I wanted to do a basic overview of the index card cleaning routine. So what do you think of this system? I would love to hear it in the comments below. Is this a system that you've used, that you've found success with? Is it a system that your mom used? I would love to hear. If you were interested, I recently compared five different cleaning routines and really kind of went in depth on how they're similar and how they're different. So if you are on the hunt for a cleaning routine, I will link that video right here and I will see you in the next one. Bye.